you today. Today's not so much a session. Today is very much going to be an info session and you can certainly ask me some questions, but it is the holidays and um, I'm realizing how dark I look. I need lightage. One sec. Can you see me better now? Okay. Maybe a little too nice. Hang on. A little too bright. Okay. Now that I have a big white blob in front of my eyebrows. Um, today is, is a comparison and there's lots and lots and lots of different vibration machines available on the market. Today, I wanted to focus on, uh, there's a few brands and it, it must be related to the holidays because ad spending is up and everybody's buying for your business. Um, but there's a couple of brands that have been on the block for a number of years, um, almost as long as I have been. And my background in vibration plates started in the medical side, the medical grade plates and medical grade, um, commercial grade doesn't always mean better performance or better benefits. Um, I, I just want to touch on that piece first. So if, if you're being told that a vibration plate is commercial grade, you're probably going to be setting back twelve, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000. A commercial grade vibration plate to me is something you can put into a facility. It's going to get used, you know, 10 to 15 hours a day, variety of different users. It's built to take high volume traffic. Uh, so commercial doesn't mean bigger and better. Um, performance between vibration machines um, varies as do the specifications within the different types of movements. So today we're going to be talking about a single type of movement and um, my superstar behind the scenes, Jen, I, I created a bunch of uh, documents. Uh, if, if you would like to follow along with me today, if you're joining me today, please tell me where you're from. Uh, I love to know who's listening to me ramble. Um, if you own a Life Pro, if you own a Zaz, today we are comparing two brands. And uh, I'm going to show you in comparison a couple of examples. Life Pro has a number of vibration plates. Zaz has one vibration plate and um, they look very different. The websites look different. The plates look different. Um, and I'm, I've put in my reference document uh, that you can view on your own, or if, if you're following me along today, uh, you can compare specifications. So, oh, hello, Cindy from Everett. You have the Life Pro. Um, so I'm not going over every model today, Cindy, but I think some of this information will resonate with you. If you're using a vibration plate now, uh, versus researching, uh, purchasing thoughts down the road. Sometimes you can get a little lost in the marketing online. So part of what I wanted to do today was compare these two brands, Life Pro and Zaz. I have owned and taken apart probably more vibration machines than most people on the planet. Um, it, it's just the way that I, I, I learned when I got into the industry and as the home machines started coming out. Uh, at one time, um, a colleague of mine and I owned the largest independent vibration plate collection in the world which just meant that I, my husband hated me because I had vibration machines in the garage, in the storage, in the base. I had machines everywhere. And you can independently test these. It's not important to know all of the math, but if, if you're setting up for like a study, um, you know, that there's certain factors that, that research should be validating before they perform a study. And there's a checklist for any of you researchers out there if you are looking at doing so. So today, um, the first thing I want to discuss is, is the type of movement. So um, there are lots of different movement types, but the two types of machines that we are comparing today are referred to as oscillating. I'm going to have Jen post uh, a, a little visual for, for those of you that own Life Pro Plates. Um, you may have um, one of the Rumblex series or a Turbo or a, a hover, there's a, a few models that have more than one movement type, but the primary type of movement in vibration is oscillating. It, it mimics that movement of walking, that side to side pivot at the hips. So oscillating when you're standing on the surface of, of a Life Pro in that mode, or if you stand on the surface of the Zaz, you will feel a very similar type of movement. It's shifting you naturally side to side. 
Oscillating vibration plates offer much less impact than walking on the floor. And um, I'm, I'm going to get into how it does that a little bit more when we get to the specs part of this. Uh, but oscillating is, you know, I could line up a thousand people with every type of movement. And, and if you were to try the machines, oscillating feels the most natural. It feels the most comfortable. It, it kind of mimics, uh, like I say, how we move across the floor. And it, I always say it's the most functional type of training. I'd like to also say hello to Brenda and Dolores and Kim. Thank you for joining me today. For those of you that are not familiar with vibration plates, what a vibration plate very quickly is, is it's an environment that stimulates these, these very kind micro movements at a very fast pace while you stand or sit or do a push up or whatever position floor based exercise that you're doing on the plate. And what the plate does through two numbers, which is the first part of specifications we're going to talk about today in our comparison, there's two very important factors. And most, most, most companies out there are only really kind of being truthful or disclosing one. One of the reasons that I as, as a trainer in vibration plates recommend life pro and one of the reasons i wanted to talk to them early on in in my independent career is is their forthcoming in their specifications you may not understand them or how how they relate to your platform but it was one of the few sites i could go to online look at a plate and the specifications were there i know what i'm looking for same in a study so zaws to start with that side thank you for putting up the comparison there um and, and this is not a one machine is better or there's no such thing as a bad vibration machine. What happens when you stand on the surface of a vibration plate is it makes your muscles work a little bit harder uh, than if you were doing that same exercise on the floor. And, and what that can do for those of you that are dealing with chronic conditions, which is a huge long list of many different types of symptoms. But, you know, let's let's use bad knees or joint pain as an example. Sometimes, you know, if, you, if you're into walking or a treadmill or, or other floor based activities, you know, you have to do these durations that sometimes your muscles just don't get to the point of fatigue that the, the joints are starting to ache and hurt. So a vibration machine works those muscles a little bit harder, less time spent exercising is required, less effort by you as the user. So it's, it's appealing, it's kind of, you know, an exercise that most people can partake in. And once you understand modifications, there's way more that you can do than stand or just squat on a vibration machine. There's a lot of therapeutic applications. Brenda, can you please show the best position to sit on the vibration plate? Brenda, today's a little bit more about Q&A, so I'll get to the A part of it after. Today's a little bit more about comparison than demonstrating, but I can certainly, if, if, we can't see that on camera um, at the end of the session today. I can certainly link you to some videos where I get into a bit more detail. Sitting on the machine is a whole session in itself as far as benefits, but um, you can sit on a vibration plate. That's one uh, way that you can benefit. Specifically looking at the two factors that I'm circling back to. So while you're on this plate, we're on an oscillating plate. There are two key numbers in the language of vibration machines. One is amplitude. Amplitude is probably the least discussed. You're using it now. You're experimenting with it now without even realizing. Amplitude is how far apart your feet or your hands are when you're standing on the plate. So if you're closer to the center, you're moving less. If you're wider to the outer edges, there's more swing, there's more movement. And the amplitude of a machine is measured, measured at that outer edge. And we're going to start with Zaws today. So their 20K model, they've had several models over the past. Uh, their most current model, the Zaws 20K, offers an amplitude range of 1 to 10 millimeters. So if you're looking at that spec online, you might say, well, what does that mean? If you're standing dead center with your feet, you're moving the least. If you're standing way out on the outer edges, you're moving much more. So at that outer edge where you don't really stand, you're not standing with your foot half on and half off, um, but you're working with about eight to nine millimeters of usable amplitude. And that's how far the machine moves you each time it's moving. The other factor, which is very, very important, is, is, is frequency. Frequency, like the term, is how many or how many times a plate is moving you side to side. So on an oscillating plate, and this is important because sometimes when you're shopping and comparing specs online, if you don't, if you're not comparing apples and apples, it's hard to compare. 
So if, if you are uh, standing on your life pro machine right now and you go left, right, you do one movement of the plate that is called one Hertz. So one movement, not two, one cycle of the plate is referred to as one Hertz and different movement styles have different frequency ranges. But today we're going to keep it simple and, and keep it to oscillating plates. So I started with Zaws, the two factors that are very, very important when you're looking online. And if you cannot find these factors, I'll explain what they mean. And I've done that in other sessions. But if they're not being disclosed, your first question as a consumer should be, well, why not? As I said, whether you understand the scientific terms behind these or not, it is something that somebody like me is looking for when I'm comparing machines online. And again, back to LifePro, I easily found it, not on one plate, on every one of their plates. And I, I, there's so much information online. Those, those specs are outlined in your manuals towards the back end if you're curious. But I've consolidated a few examples here today to, for comparative purposes. So the frequency, as I mentioned on Zaz. We'll stick with that number first is one to 10 millimeters. You want more, you're standing towards the outer edges. You want less. And, and what that really controls is the intensity or how strong the vibration machine feels, regardless of what program or setting or level you are using. Okay. Uh, let's compare first to the rhythm. The rhythm model by Life Pro visually looks the most like the Zaws. Um, but it's very different in its specifications. So if you were looking online and doing a simple comparison, you know, it's, it's a little sexier because it's black and there, there's a lot more behind the company, in my opinion. Uh, we'll get into what's included in, in the next little bit. But the amplitude, just as a comparison, if that's all you were comparing online, is 1 to 17 millimeters, almost double. What, what the amplitude is on the Zaws. So you're moving quite a bit more on that outer swing, okay? Couple of reasons for that, I won't get too technical. Larger plate, so it's a larger plate surface. So if, a, the, you know, if, if you were to take, I'm gonna do my little cheesy visuals here. If you were to take your plate and, 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 and make it wider, the swing on that outer edge is larger than if you're working with a small surface. So it's got a wider uh, position that you can put your feet. So the wider you go, the more amplitude you get. Um, but the biggest difference between these two, and I'm gonna get into an explainer about benefits here uh, to cover this off. The frequency range on the, on the rhythm is two to six Hertz. Very specific use, very purpose built. The lower end of the frequency range on an oscillating plate is perfect for balance and stability training. And way back in the day when, when many of the designs were coming out with the handles, um, those, those slow frequencies, you know, the, 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 that they're really good for a lot of our seniors, uh, for people that are recovering. You know, uh, if you had a stroke or, or, or anything neurological where the balance has been compromised, uh, those of you that are dealing with osteoporosis, osteopenia, you know, nobody ever died of osteoporosis. It's the fall, the break and, and the recovery that really we're fearful about. So by association, sometimes a vibration machine can be fearful because it's shaking us and you're standing on it. And the, the last thing you want to do is destabilize yourself if your balance is poor to begin with. So the rhythm really is ideally, it's just kind of a specific use machine for me. So if you're needing something for stability, you're specifically just wanting to target balance and stability, you should have something to hang on to. And I, I think the rhythm falls better into that category, but the, the frequency range, it goes about a third. Uh, those slow frequencies, um, are again, ideal for, for balance specific use, uh, getting above that. What happens sometimes with these designs that have the handles, um, as you get going faster, just like you moving on a machine, anything attached to it starts moving. So the, the max frequency on the Zaws and most machines that look like that design are going to top out at about 14 to 15 Hertz. I have validated the, the Zaz independently in another life. I have owned and taken apart several of them. Uh, they have been sold. They're what I would refer to as a white label brand. So they're, they've done some modifications and some branding of their own, but there's many, many machines available that look very similar to the Zaz. There's the confidence fit. There's the, um, 
oh, the, the T-zone up here in Canada. There's the cardio fit over in Australia. There's, there's an association with this company and that design. And it hasn't really, from a performance perspective, evolved in any way, shape or form in the 10, 12 years that I've been familiar with this plate. There's been some new modifications as far as the design look, um, but the actual performance of the machine is topped out at 15 Hertz. It claims speeds of 99. And this is where most of us get confused online. So I need to use an analogy because we do the same um, when, when we talk about life pros plates next. Speeds or levels are undefined. So if you were sitting in your car, and you're driving along in your car and your speedometer says zero to 150 levels, you'd be like, well, what is that? It's, it's not defined. What if it's 150 speeds? Well, we all know in, in the language of driving our car or our motorcycle that it's kilometers per hour or miles per hour. You know, so we have an association with the definition of speed. On a vibration plate, as I referred to earlier, frequency is the number of times per, per second a machine is moving you side to side or up and down or whichever way it moves. And um, speeds or levels are just a way of breaking those frequencies into more modifications. So um, instead of having you know 12 um, hertz, you, you've got a speed adjustment of about five or six within each range of that frequency. So it just gives you the ability to modify and customize and progress. Um, you don't always need to change up the positions, sometimes just changing your speeds. So in comparison to the rhythm, um, again, you know, you, we're, we're looking at two very similar machines if you're just looking at the pictures online, but the amplitudes and the frequencies are very different. And these two numbers combined so how fast you're going and, and how wide your feet are or your hands combined to what's called an overall G-force. There's been a lot of discussion about another plate that I'm going to talk about in another session. Um, but G-force um, on a vibration plate is very different than G-force back in that car. So if you're in that car and, and you've got a really fancy one, I do not. But if you've got one that goes fast and you hit the gas, you know that feeling where you're pushed into the seat, G-force is coming at you and accumulating on your body and pressing against you. But when you're in a car, on a motorbike or an airplane, you're going in one direction, singular, forward, okay? Or backwards if you're falling. Um, on a vibration plate, you've got this split second thrust where it, the, the plate moves your body and a split second later where there's a free fall. So regardless of the amount of G-force that you're being exposed to, a split second later, it's, it's released and, and what it creates is the muscles to respond versus an accumulation of force like you would feel in a car. So it's it's hard because you know there, there's really no principles or handbook to using these machines out there. And a lot of times they get mixed up with things like jackhammers and tampers and workplace stuff. It's, it's complete rubbish and any reference to it should be completely ignored. Um, the waiver, I'm gonna step over to the waiver. Why? Because it looks nothing like the rhythm. It looks nothing like the Zaws, but I want to talk specs. We talked a lot about balance. We talked about how the first two machines are ideal if you want to improve your balance. And for some of you, that's all you're using a vibration plate for. But what happens when you use a vibration plate, like the very first thing that happens, even within the course of a session, is your balance improves. There's a couple of things that are just kind of a side effect or what I like to call a side benefit of using these plates balance is one of them in my pediatric group and in a lot of the clinics i work with they'll use singular purpose they'll use a vibration plate just for a minute or two prior to doing their other therapy stuff because it makes the user more stable it relaxes you it boosts your your blood flow and your circulation so it's an awesome pre-treatment in complement with other things and other therapies that you might be doing so the rhythm should be in every clinic everywhere just as a pre-treatment Okay, so that's a prime example. The waiver, what tends to happen if you're using your plate regularly, which if you watched any of my sessions in the past, outside of understanding how they work, um, consistency is really, regardless of what you're using for a setting, consistent regular use is really what's going to win the race in the long run. So, you know, after a week or two, all of a sudden your balance gets better and, you know, you kind of test yourself and you're not hanging on to those handles anymore guess what? You probably won't need them. If you're using, unless you've got some completely debilitating medical condition that, that will never improve, 
balance always improves with regular use. It's I've never in my 15 years had somebody say, oh, my balance got worse. All I get is people saying, wait a minute, my balance is better. Hey, I didn't walk into the wall today. Thank you, Kim, for supporting that. But it's once you start using the machines, whether you were looking for it or not, it's one of those things that improves very, very quickly. So uh, very often you want to progress and do other things. So thus enters the waiver and all of the other Life Pro models. I'm going to circle back for a second to the Zaws handles. Biggest thing I forgot to mention, $2,569 US price tag. Mm-hmm. Um, I've known Zaws for a number of years. They, they sell through Costco. They sell through Sam's Clubs. And I have many clients phoning me and saying, well, I don't really feel the difference. What is the difference? Um, there's another little reference I'm going to have Jen post behind the scenes. Oscillating movement is the movement of Zaws. They have another term. Uh, Jen's going to post the definitions, but it's not really a patented terminology thing. So for $2,600, um, you are basically getting the rhythm with a little bit more frequency. The rhythm retails at $359. There's, there's, anyways, there's no, for somebody like me that is trying to help people improve their situation, I'm not helping you improve your situation by paying 10 times the amount for a device, in my opinion, that gives you no more performance than, than what you've probably spent two to $300 on. So, um, on to the waiver. Uh, I'm going to hone in again back on the specifications. What I can see is a trainer with amplitude. And again, if any of you have watched any of my sessions, the amount of movement is the control. So depending on how you're feeling, what level of conditioning you have, you know, maybe you have good days and bad days. You, you, you've got chronic conditions. You, I don't like people standing as wide as humanly possible. There's this mentality out there from trade shows back in the day that the wider you stand, the more benefits you get. It's total rubbish. The wider you stand, the more movement and the more impact you're subjecting your body to. It's certainly not a stand starting point for everyone. Start functionally with your feet no more than hip width apart. And that's going to bring you in about a third of the way off the edge of your plate. The waiver offers um, an amplitude of zero to eight millimeters. Why? Because they know that, that, you know, once you start getting into higher frequencies, you don't need that much amplitude. It's a complement between those two numbers. And plus Debbie coaches functional training. So what they've done is they've, they've lowered the amplitude a little bit, but widened up the plate. So you can stand in those wide, I don't know, Taekwondo conditions or, you know, uh, to positions, or if it, maybe you're doing yoga without having to subject yourself uh, and you'll notice a lot of the plates over the last five to 10 years have substantially reduced the amount of amplitude. But demand is what it is. What I, what I appreciate about the rhythm model is I do have some users that like that hard hit, that high amplitude. It's just, it's, it's a preference thing is, is really what it boils down to. So the fact that they have uh, a model that offers 17 millimeters of amplitude it doesn't exist anywhere else in the world. They're giving you a choice. There's never one plate perfect for every situation, every budget, every person's apartment. Uh, so back to the waiver, what else can I tell you about it? It's got a frequency range of four to 12 Hertz, not quite as healthy as the Zaws, but double what the rhythm offers. So once that balance improves, uh, one thing that, that's really become popular in the last five to six years is plates without handles. I mentioned, you know, for why earlier, but ergonomically, if you do progress or, or you're recovering and you want to get back to other things like crunches or planks, you may find selecting a machine with handles is, is, you know, it's limiting. You, you, you're kind of limited to doing what you can fit into a certain place. So I, I prefer personally uh, for my applications using a plate with no handles. You, you can put it by a counter, put it by a chair back. You know, you, you balance will improve if you stick with it. So I challenge you if, you, if you've had a plate for three to six months and your balance has improved, why aren't you using your plate? Consistency really is the key. Um, and, and the next thing that you'll find with the waiver is it's a little bit more portable. If you do want to take it with you to the cottage, if, if you want, you know, maybe you've had an injury and you're recovering from something and you want to put it by the bed, the, the, the plates without handles 
they're a little bit prettier to the eye. There's lots of different reasons that people are motivated to buy. I'm just offering some feedback. But I, I think in the long run, you will be much happier with something like the waiver or the next model series I'm going to talk about um, than the rhythm if your goal is to progress. Now, the big point comparing back to our Zaws, $399. That's regular price. A lot of times it's on sale. So compared to 2500 26 almost, um, the plate size is, is practically the same. The weight is a lot less on the waiver than, than the upright model. So it does have more portability. Um, once you have this machine, you're really only limited by your imagination and your range of motion. And, and you're going to find just talking with the VIP group, there's going to be other things you want to do. So unless your, 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 your goal is just specific balance training, or, or you're going to need something to hang on to for life, I would consider the rhythm, but by more preferring the waiver and the the handles without plates to me again at twenty six hundred dollars th there's no comparison to the zaz you, you're, you're overpaying for what you're getting i want to move over from a frequency standpoint to a more comparable uh series which is the rumblex the rumblex series offers more than one movement type so I, i've asked jen to just share a little visual document we talk about these terms all the time the 3d the 2d the 4d the oscillating, the lateral. And sometimes if you have a visual, because it's really hard to see me moving two to three millimeters on camera. So I made you a little visual chart, my cheesy little art skills. But the Rumblex has a higher range. The Rumblex series, most of them go upwards of about 15 hertz. And the amplitudes are one to 12. I'm looking specifically at the 4D Plus, which is the one I use in most of my sessions. I, I'm comparing it because it's a flat plate style, which the Zaz is as well. The biggest advantage stepping up to a Rumblex, if you're looking at athletic training, you're a taller user, you're a big guy, is you've got more plate surface to work with, which is also part of the reason the amplitude again increases. You're working with a bigger plate surface. Now it's not unmanageable. It's just about 39 pounds. So the portability is still there. There's wheels on one end of it. Um, you can just wheel it around, but it does give you a larger surface to work with if you're looking at more athletic applications um, and it also has a larger weight capacity. So I want to move down a little bit. Um, specs comparison, I'm going to take the Rumblex series. You're getting 1 to 12 mils and 4 to 15 hertz in comparison to Zaws, 1 to, tw 1 to 10 mils and 2 to 15 hertz. Again, uh, the biggest thing you need to pay attention to is $398 versus $2,500. 20, almost $2,600. There is no comparison. I don't care what marketing is thrown your way. Let's move down here a little bit more. Machine weight itself, comparison, comparing the Zaws, it's 105 pounds with a user weight, max user weight of 330 pounds. Uh, the Rhythm uh, weighs in, it's a little bit less at 60 pounds. Uh, max user weight also at 330. Uh, the Waver uh, max machine weight itself is about 25 pounds. I see I've got a typo in my sheet. Darn it. I will fix it and update that. Um, max user weight is also 330. So, you know, same there. Uh, stepping over to the Rumblex, most of the models offer a 500 pound weight capacity. And certainly for the ladies in my fat disorders group, you know, it may not just be a body size thing, but for my athletic guys or my, my ladies that like to work out, if you're using some of the, the power flow dumbbells or you like to add mass to your workouts, having something with a little bit higher weight capacity and certainly no handles in the way, it, you're going to find it's just a more suitable platform for the applications that you're using it for. But again, it's a fraction of the price. Um, other things that what comes with the Zaws, it includes resistance bands, um, a poster of exercise position, whole body vibration positions, and a user manual. Um, Life Pro includes all the same things with the exception of the Rumblex. Depending on the model, there are some other um, accessories that are included, but there is a remote control with each model. There are resistance bands. There are mini bands, which are the little elastic bands. They're, they're cool for different uses as well. The user guide, which includes whole body vibration exercise positions. And um, the, the Rumblex series come with uh, an exercise mat that you can place on the machine as well. So much more included there. The, the other thing is, is let's scroll down. Well, what if I want more training? And, or what if I have a breakdown? 
you know, you know, so let's, let's look at this from a company comparison, not a model comparison. One of the biggest things that I'm very proud to associate myself with as far as life pro, cause I, I represent a lot of different plates. I I've worked with a lot of the medical devices, but is warranty as a trainer. The very, very last thing I want to deal with in my groups or with my poor clients that are dealing with chronic pain and issues is breakdowns and problems. And, you know, I understand sometimes things break down, electronic things happen. I've had lightning bolts hit houses. I've had floods destroy machines. So things happen. But what is the warranty? What, you know, what, what's, what's covering me? If I'm spending $2,600, I expect not only some warranty, but some service. So for $2,600, you are getting two years on the motor parts and labor for $250 additional as an investment, which is bringing you up to the 2750 range, you can get an additional five year extended on the motor parts and the labor. What is Life Pro's warranty? For those of you that know, feel free to comment. Tell, tell me, does anybody, it's lifetime. They take care of it. So I don't need to deal with it as a trainer. And again, things happen, you know, so there's not only is, is there a lifetime warranty, but there's these people on the other end of the phone and the live chat that help you. I'm, I'm 50 plus now. I, I have trouble saying that. And I come from that school of sometimes I want to talk to a person. Sometimes I want to deal with somebody directly. And, you know, I'm not saying 24 seven, but they're, they're pretty darn receptive. We live in this immediate world of gratification, but if you ever do have an issue with your life pro platform, I've never not had it resolved uh, by one of their awesome customer service people. So thank you for that. Um, what else can I tell you? Other things. So training I mentioned also, um, like, uh, Zaz offers an elite portal portal training site for $360 us. We're now well above three 3,200. If, if you wanted that, what does life pro offer? Well, are you listening to me ramble today live three times a week? Me, Amber, Roseanne, sometimes more if there's launches and things. They offer other things besides vibration machines because the variety of life is important. And sometimes you need to, to change or complement what you're doing uh, in your self-care or your, your fitness training. So there's variety there. And then you're still dealing with the same company. Um, they also have vi lots of videos on the member portal on Life Pro TV. Um, there's a community VIP group, which some of you are probably watching me on today. And uh, like I said, weekly live videos. So the coolest thing about this is it's not, you know, here's 360 bucks and this is what we want you to learn. I could do this all day long. You tell me what you want to learn and I'll do a session. So it's the interactiveness of having a relationship with a company that not only responds to your issues when you have a problem, but your needs as you're progressing through your training. And hopefully if you're sticking with it um, and being consistent as you improve. So I hope that little ramble fest offered some insight. Um, three things that I, I want to share today. One of them, I didn't compare all of Life Pro's platforms, but I wanted you to, it's not just about the frequency. Different frequencies offer different ranges. Other platforms offer higher frequency ranges, but there's different movement types, much more substantial costs. Don't get too hung up in that. But if you are comparing online, it very much at the least should be disclosed. So when I was looking online this morning, I could find that Zaz had 99 speeds. I could find that it had one to, to 10 millimeters of amplitude. I could not validate their frequency. Um, I have done that independently numerous times in the past under many of these brands and the industry average is about 14 to 15 Hertz. What happens with that type of a design uh, when you're standing on it, when you move, your body responds. Well, anything attached to the plate, including a handle and side rails, you know, they're moving too. So if you've got a rhythm model and when you're standing on it, it's like, you know, it's doing this. It's supposed to do that. It moves. It's, it's not going to be stationary. It moves. It's, it's, it's resonance frequency as the machine's shaking. It's, it's moving the, the handle and the, the rails as well. So you typically won't see more to fit more than 15 Hertz for that reason. If it starts getting going faster and there's been examples of these machines being wrapped up to higher frequencies and they literally shake themselves apart. They're just not meant to have handles attached to them. So if you are looking at any machines out there with an upright handle in an oscillating movement, oscillating movement, they're not going to be much more than 14 to 15 Hertz, regardless of what they may claim. It's just the way that they work.
So I hope I've rambled your brain enough. I look forward to getting questions. Yep, I love the extra live vids. Okay, there's a few here today. And again, if you're just joining me or I've put you to sleep with my rambling, wake up. Um, we compared some very interesting information today. Um, I don't expect you to retain it all. That's why I have the reference sheets. But I do want to invite any questions. Um, if, if you have either of these machines out there, again, one of them is not better than the other. But from a cost perspective, I want you to understand that you do not need to spend the money that some of the brands out there on the internet are, are warranting. There's, there's just no dust. You're just not getting more performance. Um, okay. So I've, I've said my hellos. Hello, Cindy, Brenda, Dolores. Hello, Kim from Campbell River. Thank you for joining me. Um, thank you for dropping my, my info links today. Brenda, can I please show the best position to sit on the plate, please? Um, I wanted to get back to that. It depends on what you are wanting to do and why you're sitting on the plate. But the best way to physically sit yourself on the plate, I'm going to bring my camera down so you can see me a bit, is not, like position yourself right in the middle. I've got this model facing the wall, but I usually have the buttons in front of me so I can adjust. But if your feet are flat on the ground, you're kind of just getting it on the butt bones. Take your legs and stretch them straight out in front of you. Why would you want to sit on a plate? Because it feels good, right? Um, it doesn't have to be more complicated than that, but I, I coach using this position for anything from back and hip pain to uh, getting some lymphatic movement into the upper body by sitting on your hands. It's going to help with skin tone, constipation, urinary incontinence, um, do some Kegels while you're sitting it. There's, there's a number of reasons if you physically have the ability not just to get down, it's the getting up off the plate that sometimes can present a bit more of a challenge, but this is a very universal position. I wouldn't do it for 10, 15 minutes, but a minute or two per pose, um, you know, depending on, on what setting you like, but this, this is a, a comfortable one to do throughout the course of the day for muscle pain, uh, a number of the reasons that I said, or just add it to the end of what you're already doing. Uh, you could do it as a warm up too. I, I hope that gives you a, a very quick visual, Brenda. I prefer when I'm sitting on the machine, um, versus standing, you know, I got a lot more meat to absorb things and it's not like I'm structurally standing on the machine, fatiguing myself. I like to crank it right up. Uh, for those of you that do have a, a rumblex series, you know, you might want to try the pulsation mode or a combination of that with, uh, your oscillating, um, just some tricks, but I think you'll find versus the slow choppy frequencies, you, you, you want to bring it up and, and you'll find uh, sitting on the machine, the, the way the body, the lower half absorbs it. It's quite tolerable. Um, who else is here? Hello, Joel. Hello again, Kim. Her balance sure improved. I remember being on a call with Kim one time and made her close her eyes while she was standing on the plate. She did it. And it's just a simple way. Instead of doing crazy balance things that you may not be comfortable with, just try closing your eyes for a minute or two while you're on the plate or a second or two to start. Thank you. Thank you, Jen, for uh, dropping all my little links. Uh, Dolores, again, Brenda, I'm just new and starting out. So I wanted to sit on it for relaxation before bed. Um, probably a good idea. But if, if you're looking at using it before bed, um, I had a, 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 a user of mine, Alin. I don't know if you hear her. She's probably sleeping. She's in the UK and man, was she up all night. I don't know if it was the machine, but sometimes when you get something new and it feels so good, you go a little bit longer and, and you got a bunch of blood and circulation going. So, um, just minimal time. I would maybe stand and just, you know, warm the body up as a whole, maybe a couple of pelvic tilts for a minute and then sit and do the seated part. If you do have any stiffness or soreness, the standing is going to help with your range of motion because because once you're all relaxed, you know, getting back up isn't always OK. Uh, but keep it to about two to three minutes if doing it just prior to bed and see how you feel first. Sometimes when you first start using, you might feel like it feels like your skin's crawling or pins and needles. That's just a newbie thing that'll dissipate with regular use after about a week. Um, but don't do too much before. I have some clients that can do a big old workout before bed and sleep like a baby. You're going to have to sort of experiment. And if you find that it kept you up, maybe about a half hour to an hour before bed, just to give things a bit of time to settle down. Um, say the osteo stuff, speed, etc. Dolores, it's never speed with me. It's weight bearing positions. So what builds bones is you bearing your weight. Doing them on a plate just adds more benefit to that equation. But I would say what's more comfortable is starting with a closer foot placement 
and a higher speed level. Uh, you're going to find it much more comfortable than those slow, jarring speeds, especially if you are prone to falls um, or if you're dealing with any pain at all due to that osteo. What about the upper body cervical radiocupuli in the arms? You're testing my Google. Um, are you able to? to physically get down on the ground and do exercises. There's two ways to target upper body. Um, and really which you do is, is more driven by your range of motion than, than anything else. So uh, what you're dealing with, I believe is, is, is at the base of the spine and the head. So the second thing that you're gonna be dealing with is your own fear and your own body. Your body just wants to like guard and protect. And as a woman, it, it wants to do that anyways, Brenda. So what happens when you start doing like push-ups or, or even when you can sit on the plate and try, you know, just leaning over with your elbows or sitting on a stool and putting your feet on the plate. Um, what happens as a woman, when we start getting movement here is we fight it. You know, that's where we carry our stress and our bra straps and our purse. And we tend to fight it. And what happens when we fight and protect is we're rigid. And it amplifies how much. So just relax, get the hands close and, and try that. If you're not able to get down on the ground or, or you're dealing with a lot of really bad tension, try just sitting on a stool. I, I've shown this a million times in sessions. Bring your feet dead center and just rest the elbows on your knees as a starting point. To just to, to sort of, you might want to, if, if, if it's, if it's an uh, issue you've been dealing with a long time, you probably naturally have tension in that area and, and every, everywhere that compensates for the deficiency. So it might be, you know, a week or two just to relax before you even feel comfortable doing a push up, whether you've got the range of motion or not. So you start conservatively, not slow. Starting slow is choppy. Starting conservative in Debbie's way is ramping it up and bring playing with that amplitude more and understanding how critical it is to, to the intensity and how it feels. It feels different to everybody based on your size, your tolerance. One vibration plate never feels the same to everybody. So thank you, Dolores. Um, I, I appreciate you being here. Dottie is here, herniation, touching nerve root, causing pain, arm pain. Um, depending where, I think, to be honest with you, anything to do with the nerves or if, if you're dealing with inflammation, don't bear weight. So don't do a push-up, but something like this. Uh, Kim, who's also here with us today, uh, th this is a great one that I start for car carpal tunnels. Another reason uh, push-ups are hard. So if you're dealing with pinched nerves or, or what you're dealing with here, um, I can't see your name because I'm too blind. Dottie, I want to say your name right. Just hands down. And just get a little bit of movement and blood flow. Try and just relax. Lean forward a little bit if it's too invasive on the head. It's not harmful. It just takes some time getting used to this. And once you've done a session or two, your body kind of goes, okay, I know what we're dealing with. And this is another one, another reason I have to do it because it's the, the Life Pro versus Zaws today. Handles get in the way when you want to do, because, you know, sometimes I want to lean into it and get onto this side. Or, so, no, you know, sometimes that handle gets in the way so as you progress and i promise if you're sticking with it you will i think in the long run you're going to get a lot more versatility for everybody in the house and your own progression looking at something without handles um that's just my two cents so who else last call for questions uh nerve pain in arms um i don't know if, if you're really if if you facebook user is dotty but what i just showed you is what i recommend as a starting point if you're able to get down on the ground if you're not put a bar height stool in front of the machine put your feet on the plate and and try with the elbows that way i will go back later and find an example of where i do that seated and i'll, I'll set it up on the session uh, on the uh, comments here today if there's no other questions i want to thank everybody for listening to me ramble i rambled for 50 minutes and i didn't even stand on a plate sorry that i did that to you but today was important um it's holiday season everybody's making those last minute decisions and you know there's no rush you know you can wait till tomorrow make sure you know what you're comparing and in this trainer's opinion um you are by far better investing in, in, in one of Life Pro's platforms for three things. Value in, in what you're getting, the infrastructure and the support behind the company, 
and the lifetime warranty. That's all you need to know. And I've got a sheet if you want to look into a little bit more specifications. For any of my hubbies out there that, that are mechanics and, and are understanding the terminology that I discussed today, um, or, or engineers, those types out there, if you do have any specific questions, please feel free to tag me. Um, but I try to keep this simple so you can make your shopping decisions easier. Uh, for more how to use sessions, there's a bazillion on uh, Life Pro's Life Pro uh, page. Sign up for the, uh, the training portal and the VIP group if you have not already. And to get that lifetime warranty, make sure that when you order any of your Life Pro products that you're registering, uh, try to do that within a couple of weeks. If you're not registering within a couple of weeks, that makes me question, are you using your products? You bought it for a reason. You did the homework and you listened to me ramble. The sooner you get started, the sooner you're going to start realizing and validating the purchase decision that you made. Thank you for joining me. Don't work too hard and have a great start to your week. See you next Monday, same time, 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific for another session.